Which brings us to the dominion mandate. The word mandate, you've got to understand, mandate means an authoritative order or command. It doesn't mean a good idea. It doesn't mean a suggestion. It means an authoritative order. Dominion has to do with control. Dominion has to do with rulership. Dominion has to do with authority and subduing. And it relates to society. Now, the dominion mandate is another phrase for the Great Commission. And so Jesus paid the price of reconciliation. God gave us the task of actually making it happen that Jesus delegated establishing his kingdom to us. This is kind of sort of a prophetic word. Satan has been losing ground for 2,000 years. But prophetically, the process is about to speed up. Now I say this. Satan will lose more ground in the next hundred years than he lost in the past 2000. The year 2001 opened the second apostolic age. The government of the church is now in place. And he's also given us revelation of the crucial role of wealth. We will not see sustained transformation of cities or nations without controlling vast amounts of kingdom wealth. Uh, Dominion theology. What are your thoughts on that gets into the whole seven mountain mandate? And just a little thing on this um, that I mentioned the, the pastors in town who usually lead the national day of prayer thing here in uh, roundup. And uh -huh. I've been concerned in past years because uh, the way they do it is they don't allow people just to pray. They have slides and you're basically, everyone's just read, taking turns reading what's on the slides and um, that's not the part that was concerning, but it was what was on the slides, because uh -oh. I could tell very quickly that what they were doing was having people pray through the seven mountain mandate. And I thought it was just because they have particular leanings towards that. But this year, they ordered pamphlets from the National Day of Prayer website, and on the back, how to pray our 2009 theme, 2019 theme. And what we have here is, guess what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. Government, military, media, arts, business, education, church, and family. Which sounded yeah. awful familiar. And it got me pretty concerned as to where this is going and uh, how it's become, uh, you know, the official national day of prayer, you know, guideline here. Huh. I, I think uh, you want to know the roots of a group that are what they're, what, why they're saying what they're saying. I think uh, with, with some of the end times uh, eschatology, those who are post-tribulation, post-millennial, I guess you'd say, the Christians are supposed to Christianize everything and turn over a completely Christianized planet to Jesus when he comes. You have to throw away a lot of scriptures to accept that. Jesus certainly didn't teach that. Uh, the positive aspect of of uh you know you contrast that with the pre-tribulation rapture mentality that some get i don't need to engage this culture at all because i'm getting out of here um jesus did say occupy until i come what does that mean what does it mean to be salt and light you know identifying seven basic areas of culture where we need to be ambassadors for Christ in those to bring the good news and the gospel and truth and love to those areas. I don't have any problem with that. What, what I do have a problem with is the view that we are the ones who are going to rule the world once, you know, this thing gets going and people need to come under our authority. So there are lot, lots of heretical seeds in some teachings where you can 
eat the chicken and spit out the bones? Do I have a problem with identifying seven areas of culture that need godly influence? Of course not. I want revival to spread into all those areas of our culture. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, like with a lot of these things, what we're coming around to is that they have been overstated. Uh, mm -hmm. The framework of this is it was given as a prophecy that this is God's mandate for this latter days for us, it is time the new apostolic age has begun, and we are beginning, we are called to infiltrate all of these areas strategically and systematically so that uh, eventually the whole earth will be under the banner of Christ. And uh, That's the, uh, we will be, and it will be ruled under the apostles yeah that that's the uh theology that yeah uh, god can use people that want to take the influence of jesus into all those arenas um it's not going to take too much more history to prove them wrong as far as <laughs> you know when the antichrist is revealed and and uh things don't go the way they're expecting um, of course, they might say the Antichrist has already been revealed, and uh, you know I, I'm not I'm not a real expert on their eschatology, uh, except uh, that they the impression I have is they think that the ap apostles will be ruling under Christ. I, I I suppose when he comes back, but uh, Jesus said in the last days this and this and this and this is going to be happening. And uh, in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, you know, the Antichrist will be revealed and Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth when he comes. And Jesus talked about when he comes, he'll separate the sheep from the goats. Yeah. I don't see where their theology fits. I don't see how it's right. Um, you know, you get to eschatology there. I'm not sure there's any major position that fits exactly with every verse that you'd like it to be in, you know, I don't know. Um, but I, I think that occupying and seeking to be a godly influence and sending missionaries into those areas of culture, that's not a bad thing. Um, and it won't take them long to realize they're not going to be ruling the world uh, the way they think they are before Jesus comes back. Right. And, uh, you know, that's one of those things as I got further and further down this priority list that, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's false or it's dangerous. It's somewhat dangerous, but, uh, well, it's dangerous in the sense of if it's making people feel like they need to get under this, uh, umbrella of apostolic authority, you know, I saw where the Christian growth ministries led. I saw the bondage to human leaders it created, and I don't want to ever go there, and I don't want to see that happen anymore. 